The last set of videos in this series have been really popular, so I thought I'd do another on amplifiers. Okay, you know how it goes. This list is in order of sound quality. It doesn't mean the higher up one is more suitable, as I'm not taking account of features and use type. It's of all my experiences of amps and relates to ones I've tried. So no, what about this or what about that? Performance does tend to go with price and this isn't an uber pricey list. I don't do niche multi $10,000 or pound hi-fi. I'm not picking just due to tone and for my taste too, but due to overall sound wowness factor. So from 15 to one, sorry, that's a UK game show. I mean, 10 to one. Here we go. Musical Fidelity's M5SI Ideal is all about power and guts for the money. You won't find many amps with similar power output levels at this cache. So this amp takes the British doorstop loaf to thinner Danish bread so far as pure output drive goes. It gives off a tonally thick sound in a comforting and cosseting way. And whilst it may not be the most nuanced and dynamic of amplifiers, because it can't achieve the dynamic and analog qualities of some in this list, it gets you a decent amount at the money. Okay, I didn't technically review this at home, but I listened to it with my same kit at various events, so I'm including it. It's one of those class AB sounding class D amps that came about after Cyrus's white paper on a new class D design. It gets a huge amount out of a small box and if you want a quality amp from a well-known brand where compared to some of their other stuff, sound value isn't great, this Stereo 200 is the opposite. Okay, I'm forgetting the streaming and functionality, otherwise this amp would be much higher up the list. But when you factor in Dirac room correction tech that this amp uses, it will or probably should go higher, depending on how you set it up. But it takes its place as one of the best because it's everyman hi-fi that is of its time and gets people on that audiophile journey. It's a pretty accomplished amplifier with its Class D Hypex power modules and with the right speakers, but it works mainly for its combination of Dirac and Class D amplification. What this amp said to me, well it didn't because it's an amp and it can't talk, is you don't need to spend the mega prices of name brands. And whilst it's actually cheaper than the Stereo 200, it beats the Cyrus because it is just better sound value for money. Okay, it might be just Hypex modules bolted into a box choosing a Pasters Choice op amp, but Class D with the right speakers can work terrifically, particularly where the speakers have a rolled off top treble. And that's the thing people never ever mention when they criticize Class D. Speaker pairing. Amps like this dual mono Nord are always ones I recommend for value for those who have invested in branded speakers and want a better return on an amp without going full freight prices. This Brooklyn pips the Nord because I'm extending footprint and case design into the mix, even though I said I wouldn't, but more so and on point sound is a little bit more analog AB sounding. Hypex modules can make the treble a little diffuse into the mid range, but this MyTech doesn't use such modules. And why? Because it's more neutral, it takes its place rightly here. It's Minimax Hi-Fi, I called it, because you get huge Class D power out of a small box using its Pascal modules, which MyTech have tweaked with different MOSFETs. What FETs? A type of transistor. Running with my KEF LS50 Metas is a dream in heaven pairing. Think of all the things that make Hegel's Sound Engine 2 tech great. Add in streaming capability and a DAC. 
This amp will suit lots of mid-range audiophile applications for those who want some of the best analog sound quality in an amplifier you can get at the moment. If you want to understand what Hegel's Sound Engine 2 technology is all about, batten down the hatches and see this video of Hegel's designer, Bent Holter. Thinking caps and textbooks out please, boffins, as it is technical. Pair with brands like BMW, KEF, PMC or Spender, this is a lovely amplifier. I'm sure if the H190 is reviewed, it will very likely feature beyond the 120 for obvious reasons. It's unusual for me to place a tube preamp so high up the list because I'm not so much into the sound that tubes bring for certain types of music like electronica. And to be honest, if we look at the preponderance of solid state against tubes, I don't think the market on balance prefers tubes to solid state anyway. But this amp is up here for a combination of build and sound. And I know I said I based this on sound alone, but you can't help but be swayed by the AVM's Borchbund Dirch Technique bomb proofing build quality. The way you can look into the window on the top of the amp, the quality of the machining and the build quality overall. But it's a very nice tonally rounded and rich amplifier, still keeping to a neutral ideal, which is why I've included it. Sure, it looks like something out of a defence facility or sitting under Boris Johnson's desk to key the nuclear codes. Mm, have you said that? Maybe not for Bojo. Some of Cyrus's top range amps and preamps are now purportedly eclipsed by their XR line, but these amps are very accomplished. Cyrus isn't bright like sitting on a beach in sonic terms, so many people go on about this, but more like sitting on a beach with a warm beach towel over your head. A good balance. Sorry, I know I said I don't normally do pretentiousness. I won't go on about these amps more because you obviously get a certain amount of quality at this type of price. They are expensive for what they do and diminishing value for money does come into play. The amp at number one actually made me sell these Cyrus amps and less money too. This was actually a written review and I don't think I've ever heard timbral information that's basically just so accurate in an amplifier. Pair with the right amps and sound is terrific and this is one of the most wowing preamps I've ever tried. If you want a premium analog amplifier that is pretty much as good as it gets without the snidey Jack Nicholson-esque audiophile commentary, well it bloody well must be at this type of price, this is extremely good hi-fi. Its tonality is probably plus one with bass and plain looking this box might be, but it's like a piece of medical equipment in a hospital. It might look functional, but it could save your audiophile life. An apt analogy as well, because this firm has its origins in the medical equipment field. Alright, alright, no surprises to people who know this channel. With its dual mono balanced infrastructure, it has more analog qualities than many other amps. So I'm talking about the way the sound isn't just a flatter rendition, but dynamically undulating on its journey. But this H390 doesn't have the fatness padding in tone or tonal coloration that many amps have. And I think this is probably a measure of its low distortion and the sound engine hybrid class AB tech doing its stuff, which apparently Hegel spent an awful lot of money developing. 
it can pretty much drive all speakers most of us will use and it's forceful, powerful, gutsy and it's also a neutral amp and it outclasses some amps from the competition of brands like Name or Cyrus. It's basically like Arnie on steroids at the peak of his I'll be back frivolity. What'd you do with Sally? I let him go. You definitely won't want to let this one go. Its DAC is terrific too and think DAC quality as good as something like a £1,200-ish cord cutist. Add in Rune, open brackets, in the pipeline, close brackets, and a streaming amp too, rock solid build, neutral design to fit into lots of rooms, and a lovely quality remote, metal remote. This is why this amp is easily number one. But crucially, it does all this at a great price that kills some pricier amps. Absolutely terrific product, easily the best amp I've ever reviewed, hugely recommended, enough said. Hegel.